What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be doing Corduroy by Pearl Jam. This is a song request from one of my guitar students. His name is Troy. You can read about him at mountainsideguitar.com. He left me a testimonial since he's been doing Skype guitar lessons with me. And uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and cover the opening riff, uh, the intro, and the second riff after that because that's what he had requested. So, go and grab your acoustic or your electric and we'll get started. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to let you all know that Troy is going to be able to get to learn the whole song and, of course, ask any questions that he may be having because it's not on video. It's through Skype guitar lessons. Once again, you can reach me at mountisideguitar.com if you have any questions about this video. But if you want some personal Skype guitar lessons, that's also the place to reach me for anything that you may have trouble on. So, before we get started on any of the actual notes, let's go ahead and learn them. We're going to be first finger, it's going to be fret 7, string 5. We're also in standard E tuning. Then we're going to go up 1 fret, 2 fret, 1 string up, which is going to be fret 9 of your D string, 3rd finger. So we got these two notes. Okay, and they're going to be ringing together most of the time. We're also going to have an open A sometimes in there. And then the 3rd finger is going to be in the place already where it needs to be. And, and at the very end, we're going to do kind of like a crescendo where we have the middle finger is going to be fret 10, 6th string, and you're going to be muting the 5th string. I'll let you know when. And then the 3rd finger will be right here already. So it's going to be more of a kind of thing going on right there. So with that being said, those are the, the notes you need for the opening riff. And uh, let's go ahead and learn it now. Okay guys, so here's the first one. We're gonna call this one A, and then once we get through the whole part of learning A, I'll show you the slight difference that happens on B, and I'll talk about it as we get there. So, since you already know the notes, it's just putting them in the rhythm sequence, or melody. So in this case, we're gonna start with seven and nine. We talked about where. And we're gonna learn that part first. So we got seven, seven, nine, seven, nine. That is going to happen twice. At the end of the second time, this is where we're going to get our A and B format. So let me just walk you through that one more time. Now, we're going to start going into this open A area. But to get there, we're going to go... So let me put that into the song and show you where we're at so you can see how it breaks down. So now you're going to go back to 7 on the 5th and then open A on the 5th. So it's a. Now that's coming from the beginning, so it'll go like this all together so you can see it. open A you're gonna hit it twice now and now we're gonna be this is the part that little part happens like I said we're gonna get an A and B format and you'll see in a moment so in this case now that's gonna be your little thing right there so it's open A open A 9 open A 9 that's gonna happen twice and then from there it'll repeat or jump into the, the B part technically, which it should go to B. Let's put that all together before we start getting to this minor confusing thing that maybe I might even be blowing it up more than what it is. So, all of A. That's the riff. The thing that changes is when you go into B, is you take out the and uh, you just kind of play it through. Let me show you what I mean. I'll play A into B and then I'll explain. B. Now notice with B I didn't go. I didn't do that at all. It just went like this. It just went. 
into the open A. Okay, so those are the differences. Let me put that all together one more time just so you don't have to rewind too much. And uh, I'll say the A and B form. And remember, the only difference is you don't do this on B. But everything else stays the same, okay? So A. Now with the song, that's going to be in the order of, it's going to go A first, B, B, and then it goes to A again, but we're going to add this kind of thing at the end there just to spice it up. And uh, let me get you caught up to that ending so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to walk you through till we get to that crescendo so you can have something to play along to. Here we go. A. You can do this two ways with that crescendo or we could do it with a like that. So what we're doing is now we're going to go with the play on the middle finger, fret, uh, what is that, uh, three, five, seven, eight on the eighth string, um, the eighth string, what am I talking about? This is going to be your sixth string fret eight middle finger. You could do it like that so you go eight, eight, nine, eight, nine. And then it should go into the next part of the riff. That stuff, which we're going to get into next. But the way I'm going to teach it right now is with this crescendo. What we're doing there is we're just kind of putting the middle finger and the third finger. Well, third finger is going to be where it has been this whole time, which is going to be fret 9, fourth string. Middle finger is going to be fret 8, sixth string. But the fifth string is getting muted by the fat part of the fingerprint area of the middle finger. So you're kind of just kind of pulling it down a little. You don't want to push on the string, but you want to touch it lightly to mute it. So you're going to be playing the sixth, muting the fifth, and then playing the fourth. Okay, so you're going to have to find that little sweet spot to mute that in the middle. We're going to pluck that, I believe it's seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe it is seven times. If not, my apologies. You can kind of uh, figure it out right there uh, in the song. It just maybe slipped my mind how many times I do it. But if we were to put that together, just remember the order is going to be A, B, B, A with the crescendo. So let's just do the A with the crescendo so we can move on to the second part. As you can tell, guys, I really break these things down so you can be completely clear on how to do it. It's exactly how I teach them in my scab guitar lessons as well. And we also take notes and uh, you can send me videos. You, you practice in and I'll send videos back of what needs to be corrected or if it sounds right on the spot. So, ending. So this is A with the crescendo. So here's that ending. One more time to practice along. Let's go ahead and jump into the second part. Okay, everyone, just remember that these parts are with three different guitar players. And if you actually pay attention to what year they played this live, they play it a little bit different to keep it more interesting and keep themselves interested in playing it. So don't take this just as one way to play it. There's a couple different ways out there. I'm going to be just showing it the more straightforward way in a one guitar variation or not variation but not varied at all so in this case here's a riff now this G chord we're going to get into because we're going to talk about how it changes on the on the audio track but let's get there first so we got a power chord starting fret 8 first finger string 5 from here you're going to walk it up 1 fret 2 fret 1 string up so now string 4 third finger together they're not played like that, they're played together like this. 
tip, try to mute this sixth string with the first finger, with the fatty part of where the bone is on the tip, so you can kind of get those strums out real good. The rest of the strings, I'm muting with that first finger as well. If, that, if you can't do it, it's not a big deal. Just worry about making sure you hit five on the eight and four on the 10. You're gonna hit them one, two, three, okay? Then you're gonna move both fingers down on fret. So now it's seven and nine. Fifth string, fourth string. So together. Now if you're a super beginner, just work on that. And then G chord. Now with the G chord, I'm putting the third finger on fret two on the second string. I'm sorry, not fret two, but string two, third fret, third finger. And pinky is gonna be fret three, first string, fourth finger, or pinky. And then let's go ahead and just walk you through real quick. So we got the middle finger, the G note, which is gonna be your sixth string, third fret. First finger is gonna be fret two, string five. And then open D, open G. Now, like I already said, third finger, third fret, second string. Pinky, or fourth finger, third fret, first string. So let's get there. Now, this part, the reason why I kind of hesitated is because you can strum it whole. But the first time they do it, they do it where you just hit the bottom end. So what's the bottom end? Meaning six, five, and four. And if not six, five, four, hit six and five. It's not a, an exact science, you know, you just kind of have to feel it out with the song. Now the second time they do it, they're holding this note already. Then they're gonna fully strum G. And then depending again, if you're listening to it, if you hear the high end come in, then you could put that fuller G in or just hit the bottom end. So to go bottom one, full second, and the variation is gonna be all of the third for the full, or just the bottom end again. Once again, listen to the record, you'll hear what I'm talking about. So, that's one way, and then, bottom end only. That's what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit more just in case you need that practice. And then the last way. All right, that's it for this guitar lesson video. Hope you enjoyed it as always. And if you need more help with this song, other songs, or if you feel stuck in your guitar playing, I'm a Skype guitar instructor, and you can learn more about that at mountainsideguitar.com. If you guys want to see a second part to this video, as far as maybe covering the other wrists that are part of it, leave me a comment as well. And uh, if I get enough comments and I feel there's enough people that want a second part of this video, I'll go ahead and make one. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next guitar lesson video.